All right, so we're going to start out by talking about making media a little bit. And, you know, the question is, how on earth do you make media for bacteria? And they each have their own little idiosyncrasies, what they want to use. They need a carbon source, they need an energy source, they need an electron source, they need a nitrogen source. And depending on the organism, you know, all those might come from, say, a carbon source, like a sugar with a nitrogen on it. But you don't know, and you've got to figure that out. This is, I hope you can see that, triptych soy auger, T-S-A. And notice the person has put down their initials and also the date that they made these plates and poured them, which is very important. Triptych soy auger is really simple, what's called, it's it called complex auger, but it's a simple um, uh, formula. Complex meaning there's so much stuff in there um, that provides micronutrients and macronutrients. There's no specific molarities or concentrations of things necessary. For example, this book right here is the big Bible of microbiological media. It's a great book. It's, it's relatively thick. And you can run through this thing and you can find different bacteria and different media based on uh, alphabetically what the what the bacteria are and I don't think you can see this maybe you can but for instance this stuff here is called bacterial cell auger and when you look at what the composition is it says tryptose auger sodium chloride beef extract and yeast extract okay, what that means is literally yeast extract is like the stuff you buy at the store that's bits and pieces of proteolytic digest of yeast. Same with the beef extract. Now you don't know what the heck is in those. There's different concentrations of all kinds, manner of things in there. So that's why this is called a complex medium because you, 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 you don't know what's in it, okay? Um, tryptose, same thing. That's a triptych soy digest of beans, okay, triptych. Um, auger is what you're going to use to solidify the uh, um, plates, if you're going to pour plates, for example. If you're not pouring plates, you don't put auger in there. And notice that, for instance, it gives you all the concentrations that you need, the different things. And this is per liter, um, it says up here, per liter. So, for instance, typically auger, 15 grams in a liter is going to give you, that's one and a half percent final um, um, weight per volume. That's going to give you a nice petri dish plate. Okay, you can modify that depending on what you want to do, which we might do later in the class. But that's very typical of a complex, a complex medium. Okay, um, let's go over and look at triptych soy. Take a little stroll over here, and you know, here it is. It says triptych soy auger. It says soybean casing digest of auger. And if you read this little directions, it'll tell you what to add, how much. It says 40 grams of this powder into a liter of water. Mix it, autoclave it, and sterilize it. We'll show you that in a couple minutes. Um, but this is a complex medium that somebody has made, Difco is the company, has made this stuff, comes in a big vat, and all you have to do is take this powder, follow the directions, add it to an Erlenmeyer flask, add your water that you're going to use, and sterilize it and then you can pour your plates and use it. This already, because it says auger, has auger in it, for example. If you see something else that says triptych soy broth, that means there's no auger, that means you've got to add auger to it to make it solidify. And there's going to be different reasons to, 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 to do this in terms of how much, if you want auger or not. So many manufacturers make this stuff. You can buy it, make vats of it. That's how these um, auger plates were made. Same thing. 40 grams in a liter of this, autoclave it, you pour your plates. And I'll show you that a little later. But the alternative is a very specific medium, like 
Bacteroides cellulosolvens medium. Look at all the stuff that's in here. Ammonium chloride, there's your nitrogen source. Potassium phosphate, cysteine. I mean, more potassium, more, more, and more ammonium, magnesium sulfate, calcium chloride, iron. Rosazurin is a color that lets you, it's, a, it's, a, it's something that will change color depending on if there's oxygen in the medium or not. Trace element solution and vitamin solution. Well, then you go down here and you see the trace element solution. I mean, look at this. Magnesium. I can't even pronounce that word. Calcium chloride, sodium chloride, magne manganese sulfate, cobalt, zinc, iron, nickel, copper. So the, the list goes on and on. And that's just the trace element solution. Okay, So you can have what's a very um, um, specific medium. Um, and that means th this one is, is opposed to a complex medium, even though this one seems very complex. Everything is exactly weighed out. You know exactly what's in there. And this is for growing what are called fastidious organisms, things that are hard to grow, need specific things to make them grow. So media can get really complicated really fast. But books like this or the internet tells you how much to add per liter. And if you can find the materials, you can make these things. Okay? So it, it escapes me. Complex medium and the other term. I can't remember what the other term is because I'm a doorknob. Now, what we're going to do is um, show you briefly, I'm going to start these uh, cultures up. These are little Eppendorf tubes that have different media, different organisms in them. This one says Micrococcus luteus, someone has labeled on the top. This one's Bacillus cereus E. coli, Proteus, oh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Here's Pseudomonas aeruginosa, here's Proteus mirabilis, and this guy is Staph aureus. So we're going to show you how you'd use one of these petri dishes and a loop and try to st and, and streak these from culture onto your plate, incubate them, and then we come back later, like I'll probably come back tomorrow, and check and see how they're doing. And we'll show you what actual you know, uh, bacterial colonies look like. So, and each of these little guys will be a little different. So what you got to do is use what's called sterile technique. And what that means is paying attention to the surroundings, that should be easy this quarter. It means you don't talk while you're playing around making media or when you're, when you're um, uh, streaking plates. Because these plates are sterile. There's nothing growing on these, we hope. So the moment you pull them out of this package, all bets are off. So you have to make sure that you um, observe sterile technique to maintain sterility. If you get a bunch of stuff growing on here you don't want, that's bad news, okay? That's, there's my thumb. That's bad news. Okay, you want to just get what you want growing on there. So don't talk. Don't sneeze. Don't touch anything. If you think you touch, we're going to be using what's called an inoculating loop, which is what this thing is. Can you see that? A little inoculating loop, okay? If you accidentally touch something with this, you touch your hand, you touch the bench, you touch your phone, you do whatever. We're going to re-sterilize this. There's no reason to, to, to guess, okay? So you got to just be aware of your surroundings. Try to go well, relatively quickly and um, know what you're going to do. So we're going to streak some of these. What do you need to do? You need the culture. You also need this little inoculating loop. It's a nichrome wire with a loop in it. It is non-sterile at the moment. See? Now it's non-sterile. Um, you need your cultures. And you need something to grow them on. In this case, using TSI auger general purpose auger. Now, when I open this, I'll just open this one. This one's already open. It's another bag over here through the magic of television. Um, when I open this, I don't know if you can see this, but there's, there's condensation in here. These plates have um, a lot of water on them. You see that down there? Let's see. There's water down there. Okay. In fact, we open this, you can see there's water. In fact, I'll just shake it out here onto the, okay? There was water in that plate. 
And so what you should do when you make media is pour it. This is auger plate, of course. Pour it. Let it solidify. It takes about oh, 20 minutes to solidify, maybe. And then you should leave these things out on the bench, right side up. Let them sit overnight. That'll let a little bit of gas exchange occur. If you put these into a bag like this immediately after you poured them or on the same day, you get all this condensation that maybe you can see on the inside of this. That's only going to lead to contamination. So that's something that you shouldn't do. Okay? You should let these things dry and then put them away. But we're going to use these anyway because they're what's made for me. But boy, are they wet and sloppy. They shouldn't be this sloppy. Um, and that's, that's poor, <laughs> poor pouring. Every single one of these is soaking wet, okay? I'm going to use my pants to dry them off. That's a very sterile thing to do. Um, but as long as you keep this lid closed, you're okay.